Last time we talked about the demand curve and price as a fundamental determinant of demand. Now let's go through and think about all the other things that could affect the amount that a consumer demands for a particular item. So we have a number of possibilities here. Say that the different categories of the determinants of demand that we can think about are the following. We've got price, we've got the consumer's income, we've got prices not of the good in question but of goods related to it, we've got tastes, expectations, and for determining market demand rather than individual demand, we have number of buyers. We already talked about price as a determinant of demand when we were discussing the demand curve, but just to refresh your memory, price is probably the most fundamental determinant of the quantity demanded of an item, which is why we choose to represent that determinant on our demand curve directly. If you recall, we have the law of demand, which states that as the price of a good decreases, all else being equal, consumers demand more of that item and vice versa. The second determinant of demand that we want to think about is the consumer's income. You'll note here that technically, in addition to referring to current income, we're also in a way referring to level of wealth because the level of wealth or the amount of money that somebody has in the bank is also going to affect his or her consumption patterns. So the question is then, what happens to quantity demanded of an item when the consumer experiences an increase or decrease in income? The answer is that it depends. We actually need more information. We define two different types of goods here. The first we call just a normal good. Say so for a normal good, as the consumer's income goes up, the consumer wants more of that item, and the quantity demanded increases. Conversely, when the consumer's income decreases, the demand for the item decreases as well. On the other hand, we can have something that's called an inferior good. As the income goes up for the consumer, the consumer actually demands fewer of an inferior good. And as the consumer's income decreases, the consumer demands more of the inferior good. So let's think about some examples that would fit into either of these categories. In the normal good category, you can think of this as something even as extreme as, say, a luxury yacht. When your income goes up, you're probably likely to purchase more luxury yachts than you were before. When your income goes down, you're probably likely to consume fewer or to demand fewer luxury yachts than you did before. You can think of an inferior good as your cheap beer example. I think that empirically it was actually shown a few weeks ago that during the recession sales of cheap beer such as Bud Light for example actually went up rather than down. While this might at first seem surprising, given the framework of the inferior good it makes a lot of sense. And say, as consumers' income goes up, they actually consume less cheap beer, presumably because they trade up to something better. And when consumers' incomes go down, they actually consume more cheap beer. If you want a more typical example of normal versus inferior good, you can keep in mind that maybe filet mignon or expensive steak is a normal good, whereas hamburger is an inferior good. Normal and inferior goods don't have to be paired in that way, it's just sometimes it's helpful to think of them like that so you can always remember which one's which. There are also some goods which, at least in a general sense, are neither normal nor inferior. In that case, they would just be fairly unresponsive to changes in income. You can think, for example, of toilet paper. Toilet paper is probably not really either a normal nor an inferior good, because regardless of how much income a consumer has, their preferences and the amount of toilet paper that they are ready, willing, and able to consume probably doesn't change a whole lot. The third determinant of demand is the prices of related goods. Now we say that there are two ways in which goods can be related. They can either be substitutes, we can think of these as goods that are consumed instead of one another, or they can be complements. And we can think of these as goods that are consumed together. 
Just to give a very simple example of substitutes, you can think of this as Coca-Cola versus Pepsi. So what happens when the price of Coca-Cola, or good A in this example, goes up? Well, if Coca-Cola gets more expensive, people are likely to consume more Pepsi instead. So as the price of Coca-Cola increases, the quantity demanded of Pepsi increases. On the other hand, if Coca-Cola were to get less expensive, the quantity demanded of Pepsi would decrease. Notice that this is different from the specific demand curve relationship because now rather than talking about the price and the quantity demanded of the same item, we're talking about the price of one item versus the quantity demanded of the other item. Complements or complementary goods are things that are consumed together, such as DVDs and DVD players, iPods, MP3s, things like that. In this case, as one of the goods gets more expensive, the demand for the other one actually goes down. So for example, if DVD players get more expensive, the demand for DVDs decreases. Conversely, as DVD players get less expensive, the quantity demanded of DVDs increases. It is possible to have goods that are neither substitutes nor complements. We just refer to those as unrelated goods. Although if you think about it really logically, because we have limited resources and limited income at our disposal, to a slight degree, most items are at least weak substitutes for other items. It might not be immediately obvious, for example, whether two items are substitutes or complements. Think about the case of a fuel-efficient car versus gasoline. Are those substitutes or complements? Intuitively, you can think about them either way. You can think about them as complements in that, regardless of the fuel efficiency, the car and the gasoline are still consumed together. But you can also think of them as substitutes in that you're consuming the fuel-efficient vehicle instead of consuming more gasoline. In that type of situation, you'd need more empirical evidence to tell which effect was stronger. Taste is the general catch-all category that we talk about that just refers to, well, how much does a consumer fundamentally like something? So we can say as a consumer's taste for a given item increases, the quantity demanded for that item increases. And as the consumer's taste for the item decreases, the quantity demanded of that item decreases. Changes in taste could arise for a number of different reasons. For example, we could say that tastes are a result of particular fashions or fads. And when something goes out of style, the individual's taste for that item decreases. We could also even say that tastes are dependent on particular states of the world. For example, it would make sense for an individual's taste for umbrellas to be higher when it's raining than when it's not raining. Demand has a somewhat dynamic component in that expectations play a role not only in future demand, but in today's demand. When we're talking about expectations, we can be thinking about expectations regarding future prices, future income, future prices of related goods, future tastes, and so on. For example, if I expected an item to get much more expensive in the near future, that might cause me to want to get more of that item today, and hence my quantity demanded would increase. Similarly, if I expected my income to increase a lot in the future, that would not only affect my consumption in the future, but that would, in that would affect my consumption today. Anyone that doesn't believe me can ask the business school students that are currently in school and spending like crazy. While not directly a determinant of individual demand, the number of buyers in a market is certainly relevant for market demand. And we can say all else being equal, as the number of buyers in a market increases, the market demand increases. And as the number of buyers in a market decreases, the quantity demanded in that market decreases as well.